games. And what they've been able to do is simply at the end of these close games, and they play all close games, they've been able to make baskets. Virginia coming out in the blue, Miami the white. It's the only meeting between these schools this season. Miami back home here in South Florida after a three-game road trip where they lost their last two, including at Georgia Tech on Saturday in their most recent out. This is Jay Huff backing in. And for Miami, They've started five different lineups this season. They used the same lineup for the first 18 games. Then injury set in, so it's been a patchwork group of five that they've had to cobble together since then. Now Cavaliers, of course, in their standard man-to-man -man defense, and what you have to be able to do is get inside this defense. That's Isaiah Wong trying to get inside. Rebound comes free. Taken back up by Rodney Miller. He can't convert. And it can get inside, but it's hard to finish with Jay Huffman there. He has really emerged as a shot-blocking presence for the Cavaliers. And when you can play more aggressively on the perimeter because you know Jay Huff and Mamadi Diakite are back there to block shots, that makes your perimeter defense even better. Virginia starting five. We will see a lot of them here tonight. Not an exceptionally deep team, but these starting five have been the heart and soul of this comeback here over the last couple of months that's put them in position to win the conference title. And of course, led by head coach Tony Bennett in his 11th year, a three-time national coach of the year and four-time conference coach of the year at Virginia. Now you could make the argument that given all the stuff that they lost, all the players they lost from last year and their slow start this year. You can make the argument that this may be one of his best coaching jobs despite all the previous accolades. This is DJ Vasilovich off the mark on his first three attempt of the night. And for Tony Bennett, he said earlier this week that we can play with anybody and anybody can play with us. You have to be locked in on a given night, fully engaged, and that's gonna determine how well we do. And also, Jay Huff doing that inside the paint is going to have a lot to say about how well the Cavaliers do as well. Now, you got to keep Kihei Clark out on the perimeter. Once he gets in that lane and somebody's got to come to help, then he does such a great job finding his big guys, and particularly the slob passes to Jay Huff. He's, uh, he's got a patent on that. And then it's going to be a foul on Diakite. Kihei Clark drives in. Rodney Miller comes to help. Nobody goes down to give Miller a hand. Miller gave Likes a hand, but nobody gave Miller a hand. And as a result, Huff is all alone for the dunk. Jay Huff has both of the oh field my. goals to start this game. And Chris Likes coming up well short on a three-point attempt. He is the leading three-point shooter on this Miami team. Well, the one thing you can't do against Virginia is take bad shots. They will wear you out if you do. Kite, spinning and traveling. Jim Laranega in his ninth season on the sidelines here in Miami. His 36th season as a head coach overall. A national coach of the year, two-time ACC coach of the year as well. 620 win seasons here for the Hurricanes. That's the most of any coach in school history. Now, Mamadi Diakite comes out of the game, not because he traveled, because he picked up that personal foul. They do not want him to get in foul trouble. This Virginia team among the lead leaders in fewest fouls per game in the ACC. Stone feeding and Miller finishing. Rodney Miller, leading rebounder on this team and shooting it just inside of 60% from the field so far this season. Virginia. Chapman in the ball game for Diakite. And Jay Huff. And swatted away as he tried to find the angle underneath. Comes up holding his thumb. Dean Stone going up against Huff. Decides to back it out. Vasilovich missed his first three. He's two for 17 over his last three plus games. Chris Likes is going to be called for the offensive foul in his first for Miami. And that's that can be a problem for the Hurricanes, too, because Chris Likes, for Miami to be successful, he has got to be very aggressive. And that time he was aggressive, but Kihei Clark just moved his feet 
agree the offensive foul. Chris likes talking to the official. He doesn't agree it was an offensive foul. Now likes is the league score, averaging 15 per game. Had 14 in the loss at Georgia Tech this weekend. Had 16 points in the loss at Virginia last year in the game between these two teams. Kihei Clark finding Statman. Four minutes going by, first half. Will the tenth side throws up the left hand hook. And Sam Wardenberg pulls down the rebound for the Canes. All right, Will the tenth side, he's almost strictly a three point shooter. But they're trying very hard to run him off the line. So that's a nice, he didn't make the shot, but that's a nice job by him to try to get in on the inside. Miami trying to climb above the 500 mark on the season. And Rodney Miller goes for the reverse, but a little too strong off the window. Uh, you got to make that one because he got by Braxton Key. You just go up and dunk it. Isaiah Wong really trying to stay close to Wilbur Tensai. Braxton Key over Wardenburg. See, now these are tough shots too. Virginia, they may be close, but they're very difficult shots. Good defense by Miami. Well, Miami has been very inconsistent with their defense this season. They are last in field goal percentage defense in the ACC. They just have these letdowns. Don't stay fully engaged throughout the 40 minutes of play. So the offensive struggles continuing for both teams here in the first five minutes of this game. But you didn't expect an offense, a display of offensive fireworks here. Well, Virginia lately has been getting just enough offense. And all of their offense coming from Jay Huff so far. He's got all six points here tonight. Well, what a great pass by Kihei Clark and what a great pass by Braxton Key. Really good ball movement by the Cavaliers. Virginia on this remarkable run. They've won six in a row, nine of their last ten. They get the steal here, and they have numbers. A three on one. Well, the Ted side gives it up. Key can't finish them. Boy. That was a great job by Kihei Clark to create that whole situation. And if you're the Virginia Cavaliers, I don't know how much easier a shot you're going to get than that one. Braxton Key looked like he went off the wrong foot or tried to go up in between steps. But that was a layup. Chris Likes finally gets on the board here with his first basket of the game, pulling Miami to within two. Likes, despite his diminutive stature, can really excel in the lane. He's so quick, gets guys off their feet, and is surprisingly well inside the paint. T.H. Clark trying to post him up that time. <laughs> Didn't work. Those are the two smallest guys in all of major college basketball. Clark and Likes. The two players both indispensable for their respective teams as Likes buries the first triple of the night. Seven minutes deep to give Miami their first lead of the game. That's two baskets by Chris Likes when he has been able to shake free of Kihei Clark. Virginia's got to do a better job when they get in that screen and roll situation. Corner three from Huff. Well, of and course, Jay he's, Huff he's the, the only guy who's allowed to score right. tonight. First three-point basket for the Cavaliers. And for Jay Huff, it is quite the start. He's got nine points to lead all scores. We just we haven't had any whistles in this game. Then one foul on Mamadi Diakite. Miami. Three of nine from the field offensively. Three to shoot here. Wardenberg goes up and he banks it in. So eight minutes gone by and we're tied at nine. That was a dangerous pass, but good hands inside by Wardenberg. That was a tough catch, and then he maintained his pivot foot, let a couple of guys fly by. Knocked away and out of bounds over to Miami. 
so the team's trading three point that kind of defense and they can score they can be very very tough Head How, however i think what we're going to see here today is these teams make little runs at one another miami began the game one for their last seven they've made their last three field goals so even Virginia, very good defensively. They're not going to shut everybody down all the time. Virginia head coach Tony Bennett said that really it's been a matter of guys learning the system and then just growing and maturing. And now by winning so many close games lately, they're developing the confidence to win those sorts of tight matchups here in the month of March, a season and a portion of the college basketball calendar that is defined by close games. Chris Likes lost the handle, got it back, and was double teamed. How about Kihei Clark staying in front of him? That was unbelievable. And a whistle here, a foul on Virginia. And we step aside, come back after this. 9-9 here in South Florida. Point attempt for Miami. How do you see the tournament going down big picture-wise? Well, about the only thing that's settled in that tournament is which teams have the double time. <laughs> because uh, you could still have a lot of shuffling around at the top. The only team that controls its own destiny is Florida State. If they win out, they win the regular season championship in the number one seed. Everybody else has to win, and they need some help from other people. Four turnovers now for Virginia here. In order for Virginia, to win the ACC regular season crown. They have to win out. They have to get the victory here tonight, as well as on Saturday against Louisville. And they need Florida State to lose at least once. Now, if Virginia wins out, Florida State loses twice, and Duke loses, then Virginia can still claim the outright ACC regular season championship. So a lot to play for for the Cavaliers here in these final two regular season games. Turnover by the Canes. Well, that was great hands by Morcell. Ordenberg had a lane to the basket, and he just reached in and knocked the ball away. That's a couple of consecutive turnovers for the Hurricanes. Midway through this first half in a tie ball game. We are level at nine. The Hoos and the Hurricanes. Mamadi Diakite. Well, the Cavaliers' problem is the only guy who scored for them is Jay Huff, and he's on the bench at the moment. Jay Huff is 4 of 5 from the field. The rest of the team is 0 for 6 for the Cavaliers. Cameron McGusty on the miss, and Diakite climbs in the air to snare the board. Virginia 4 of 11 from the field, and Miami 4 of 12. Miami is a very good defensive team. AC Morsel. Now Likes has to be careful. He already picked up one offensive foul. The turnaround from Stone. Well, just nothing doing on in terms of the offensive boards for Miami. The Cavaliers doing that very well, claiming their defensive boards. They got to get Diakite involved here. Francisco Pafaro is going to be called for the offensive foul instead. Well, neither team now has scored in almost four minutes as Jay Huff, the only man to do any significant scoring for Virginia, is checking back into the game. Well, Sunday right here on ACCN and the ESPN app, we've got the ACC Wrestling Championship from the University of Pittsburgh's Peterson Event Center. Our coverage of the finals begins at 7 p.m. Eastern. Saw a quick shot of Wardenburg walking up and down the bench. He gets blasted in the chest. Bufaro is a big guy. Eight and a half to go, first half. Who's going to get the double digits first? Tied at nine, Isaiah Wong can't find the range. That was tough. He had to go over first, Mamadi Diakite, and then Jay Huff. Now the formula for Virginia is simple. Tony Bennett reinforced it earlier today at Peter Ryan. He says we win games with our defense and we get just enough offense to make the difference. Now that was a tough shot by Huff. You don't really want him shooting that fadeaway. You gotta move the ball, get the ball inside. Again, Diakite has to get involved offensively. This is Rodney Miller kicking it out for the three. 
Miami is not a great three-point shooting team in conference play. They only shoot 28% from three-point range. Now both teams just about 30% from downtown for the season. As the field goal drought has stretched to over five minutes for both squads here. It's amazing. We've played 12 and a half minutes and nobody has more than nine points. Shot clock at four. Diakite short on the shot. And no team doing any kind of damage on the offensive glass. It's one and done for both schools. Keith Stone. There's not a lot of ball movement. There's been some, on the one hand, some quick shots, and then on the other hand, uh, it's just sort of static until the shot clock runs down, and that's not the way you can play against either one of these defenses. The Akite for Huff. Well, of course, now Huff has 11. Well, needless to say, but I'll say it anyway, he's the first player into double figures. <laughs> 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 Nobody else has half the point total that Jay Huff does through his first frame. Virginia by two. Harlan Beverly, ugly miss. Again, I think Miami, we saw them have some success taking the ball and driving it inside. You don't have to try to score in there, but you get it inside and kick it out. Jay Huff from deep. Of course. His second three-point basket. <laughs> <laughs> He's got all the points. <laughs> well, Virginia is two of three from three-point range. Guess who has both of those three-pointers? It is Jay Huff. He's got 14 points. All of the scoring for the Cavaliers belongs to one man. Well, and, uh, you know, this is they can you cut everybody down. You stop everybody except one guy. But if that one guy gets all the points and he scores more than your team, then you're... ...else has been... That anonymous offensively. And that's everyone else on both teams. Yeah. The Hurricanes and the Cavaliers. One thing he is doing, though, making the scouting report very easy for Jim Laranega and Miami. And finally, Rodney Miller with the baby hook. It's a scoring drought of six minutes for the Hurricanes. And I think that's where Miami has to go. Yes, Huff is a pretty good shot blocker, but Miller is very clever in there. Jay Huff, his third triple. All 17 Virginia points belong to the redshirt junior from Durham, North Carolina. They use cliches like one-man wrecking crew, but tonight it's literal. Jay Huff leads by six as we come up on the final five in this first half. It's going to be a foul on Kihei Clark. Well, we've been talking about Jay Huff, and he's the only guy who scores for Virginia. And I don't know why Rodney Miller would get that far away from him. Huff has been hot from out there, but this is one of the things that Virginia has done very well in their streak, and that is when guys have had open shots, they have taken them. Early in the season, some guys were passing up those kind of shots, and that does nothing but put pressure on the offense. He has already tied his career high in points, and that's still with five minutes left to go in the first half. Jay Huff coming off a monster game in the win over Duke this past weekend. Now that was deep. That was deep. <laughs> but it almost went down. And that's the heat check. Had 15 points, 10 blocks, and 9 rebounds in the win over the Blue Devils. One rebound shy of a triple-double as Chris Like scores for Miami. Jay Huff with those 10 blocks, the most for Virginia since Ralph Sampson also had 10 back in 1979. That's how impressive a performance it was by the big seven-footer. Amadi Diakite in the paint. And the leading score on this Virginia squad still has not found the bottom of the bucket. He really hasn't had an open shot. That was pretty good defense in there. And that is going to go against Cameron McGusty of Miami. And Braxton Key is such a valuable guy. He is six feet eight, but he can guard about anybody out on the court. And here just moves his feet and gets right in front of McCusty. I mean, you couldn't you couldn't have a textbook video to define what a charge is any more than that one. Well, Virginia defensively on very much the same kind of defensive pattern that they had in the win over Duke. 
and they held the Blue Devils to 50 points on the night, which equaled the lowest point total in 10 years for the Blue Devils. Keeping the Hurricanes down here tonight, but now Chris Likes is starting to heat up. That is some play by Chris Likes. Kihei Clark has to play him for the drive, and he just pulled up. Clark was right in his face. That was not an easy shot. Hurricanes within two. Yakite kicking it out for Kihei Clark. And he hits his first three. That's a nice pass by Diakite, and Kihei Clark, he is a much better three-point shooter than he has been at other stages of his career. Doesn't shoot a great percentage in conference play, but he's more than adequate if you give him that much time and room. First points by anybody not named Jay Huff for Virginia. Boy, another great defensive effort by Braxton Key to cut off that baseline. Shot clock at five, the likes. Tosses it up, and he buries it. Back-to-back -back threes for Chris Likes. And this is the problem for any team, but it's Virginia's problem tonight. When Chris Likes gets going, he can score against anybody and against any kind of defensive pressure. Again, good pressure, great shot. First Miami player into double digits. He's got a dozen. Back to a two-point game. Diakite past Stone, and finally, Mamadi Diakite is on the score sheet. And all of a sudden, we have a flurry of points on each end. Almost hard to keep up, isn't it, Dan? After what we saw in the first <laughs> few minutes. <laughs> well, T.H. Clark's got to be careful. He doesn't want to pick up his second foul here. Chris likes. Maybe force that one. Well, no maybe about it. But again, he's hot. And when he is, I think he's got to shoot the ball. Two minutes to go. First half. And That's an offensive Clark foul. He's going to get called here. Yep. So, the points are finally starting to come, and it's Virginia by four here in Miami. It all leads up to this. Thousands of miles of asphalt. For the two squads here in this first half of play, doing a lot of damage. Uh, now, Keyhead Clark has to go to the bench, and that means Morcell's got to guard likes. Now, it's interesting, in this game, there's only one offensive rebound, and Miami got it. Virginia doesn't have any offensive rebounds. Neither team shooting lights out, obviously, but there are no offensive rebounds to be had. Virginia is a better rebounding team than Miami this season. Are you surprised they don't have more on the offensive glass? No, Virginia's a very good defensive rebounding team, and you want to be careful. You don't want to give Virginia opportunities to get out in transition. And Miami's not a great offensive rebounding team anyway. There's Diakite, and that'll really help the Cavaliers if he can get going. The lead is half a dozen with under a minute left to go here in the first half. And what Chris Likes was doing there. I thought he had a lane to the basket. Is DJ Vasilovic. With the shot clock at five. Gordon Burt has to kick it out for Stone. He takes the reluctant three, and he knocks it down. He wanted to get it out to Chris Likes. Well, that is a reluctant three because he only shoots 14% from out there in ACC play. So that is a real break for Miami that he's able to knock that down. His first triple. Three-point game. Half a minute to go. And a tie-up here between Stone and Morcell, and the arrow favors Miami. Now, Morcell did a nice job getting into the lane, and Morcell is a big, strong kid. And he attacked Chris Likes, but Keith Stone came over to help. Now, Miami's season low at the end of the first half is 25 points. So it looks like it'll be a new low at the end of this first frame. They went over six minutes in the middle of this half without a bucket. Chris Likes has gotten them back in the game here late, and now looking to score the final points of the opening half, and he does. Of course he does. 14 points in the first 20 minutes for the leading score for Miami, Chris Likes. Still their season low here after 20, and it's a one-point game. Shot. This is the last shot of the half. That's just an amazing play by Chris Likes. He is 6 of 8. The rest of the team is 4 for 17. And this is the, what we've, been, we've talked about. Uh, Miami went six minutes and 17 seconds without scoring. There were no free throws in the first half. In fact, there were only seven fouls. The problem for Virginia is two of them were called on Kihei Clark. 
And if you're Virginia, you never know worry about what the score is. The only thing you're you're concerned about is you are up one on the road, and with Miami, it doesn't matter. You didn't shoot the ball well. You only scored 23 points, but you're only down one. And for Virginia, this is not unfamiliar territory. During this six-game winning streak, five of the six games have been decided by three points or less, so they're very comfortable in these tight games. Yeah, but they're not comfortable turning the ball over. That's the eighth turnover for the Cavaliers, and when you're playing in this kind of a low-scoring game, you just cannot afford to give up possession. So much at stake for Virginia. If they win tonight and this weekend over Louisville, they can claim at least a share of the ACC regular season championship. If Florida State loses one game down the stretch, they've had their hands full with Notre Dame here tonight and the game being played concurrently with our contest here in Miami. Ball slapped away. Well, the Tensai finally corrals it for Virginia. Right, and in the first half, it saw only one offensive rebound total. They had a couple of offensive rebounds for Miami there on that possession. Virginia has won six in a row and nine of ten. Miami has lost two straight. Penultimate game of the season for both of these schools. And that's just not a good shot. Braxton Key is not a good three-point shooter. In conference play, he shoots 15%. This is Keith Stone. Out for the corner three from Isaiah Wong. He still has not gotten on the board. That's a guy who's been very critical to whatever success they've had lately, but he's still scoreless here tonight. Well, he's been great in the last 10 games, but hadn't really taken much opportunity tonight. He's been averaging a team-high 16 points per game well, over they, the last they 10. They just called another offensive foul on Kihei Clark. That is three fouls on Kihei Clark. That's the second offensive foul that has been called on Kihei Clark for pushing off with that left shoulder or that left arm. And something he didn't need to do either. And a oh careless boy. foul for Kihei Clark. Well, he's going to have to come out of the game. I mean, he's trying to guard Chris Likes. Yeah, they have Casey Morsell set to clock in for Virginia here. Two minutes gone by, second half. DJ Vasilovich leads this team in made threes. But Vasilovich still hasn't hit one tonight. And Kihei Clark is the key to everything Virginia does. Leads the ACC in minutes played. Among the leaders in assists and steals in the conference. There's another turnover by the Cavaliers. Vasilovic again. Like. This time he buries the three. Eventually he's going to get hot. 34% from a three-point range. So with all Miami's offensive struggles in the first half, here they are. Virginia has not scored so far in the second half. Clark for Diakite, and he gets fouled. So our first free throws of the game are coming up next. Now the nothing but net group will be at the ACC Women's Basketball Tournament at the Greensboro Coliseum on Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern as they wrap up the quarterfinal matchup with highlights and full breakdowns of each game. Analysis and insight you can only get one place right here on ACCN. Well, the first free throw of the game, Nanadi Diakite. Diakite, an excellent free throw shooter, and he's had an outstanding year for the Cavaliers. You know, we talk about everybody they lost. The Cavaliers were very fortunate to keep him. Well, averaging 14 per game, leading this Virginia team in scoring. Had exactly that, 14 in the win over Duke this past weekend. Now, an awful lot is going to be asked of Casey Morsell here, not only on the defensive end against Likes, but on the offensive end as well. Now, Sam Wardenberg for the corner three. Same spot where Vasilovich hit one a moment ago. And this Miami team, just four of 15 from three-point range. Now, Wardenberg is another guy. He can make it from out there, but he is a very low percentage three-point shooter. Well, the ten side. Leading this Virginia team in made threes this season. Interesting will stay with the interestingly Cavaliers. Interestingly enough, that was his first three-point attempt of the game. Isaiah Wong has done a nice job running Wolden Tensai, Wolden Tensai off the three-point line. Knocked out by Stone, and it stays with Virginia. Cavaliers very fortunate not to turn it over right there. They had no chance to complete that pass.
Here is Jay Huff, again from deep. Huff on the night. Huff three of four from three-point range. He did not catch that one cleanly. Now Chris likes scooping and scoring. At 5'7", he got it by the seven-footer, Jay Huff. Chris Likes has been doing that his whole life. And he is so dangerous in transition, and this is a place where Virginia really misses Kihei Clark. He's able to get by on the perimeter. Marcel does not react well to the screen. Huff told him it was there, but that didn't help much. Jay Huff is a foot and a half taller than Chris Likes, and he still found a way to score. He's got 16 points, leading his team by a mile in scoring. Jay Huff still with 17, but most of that came in the first portion of the first half. And it's going to be a foul on Miami. And Isaiah Wong. When you talk about the versatility of Braxton Key, he's out there now handling the point guard spot. They would rather have him handling the ball against Vasilovich than Marcel handling the ball against Chris Likes. Diakiti traveled with the basketball. Another turnover by the Cavaliers. Well, there are a few teams no one wants to face in March Madness. Kind of like Tyson to face in the NCAA tournament. Virginia certainly fits that classification this season, along with Iowa, UCLA, and even Liberty. Well, Virginia plays that style where they're really tough defensively. Luca Garza, one of the best players in the country. UCLA may be the hottest team in the country. And Liberty, they're sort of Virginia light. Now, the only one there that's actually guaranteed, I guess, to be in the two, be in the NCAA tournament. There's no guarantees yet. Nobody's in yet, but uh, there's a turnover by Miami. But Virginia and Iowa look pretty good. Liberty and UCLA would probably have to earn their bid in their conference tournament. Knowing the makeup of each team, which of those four squads has the best chance to go the deepest, do you think, Dan? Well, if UCLA gets in, I think it's them. Uh, they've got a point guard in Tiger Campbell, who I think can really control the game, and in Chris Smith, they have a guy who could be one of those stars of the NCAA tournament. Another turnover by the Cavaliers. That's now 12 turnovers by Virginia. And Chris likes on the miss, but on the offensive rebound. Well, We're going to say it went over the ball's backboard. Ball's out of bounds yeah, because it went over the out. backboard. That's 12 turnovers by Virginia, five in the second half. We haven't even played five minutes yet. The shot by Chris likes. Now remember that the rule is that any part of the ball that goes over the backboard from any direction means the ball is out of bounds. And that certainly looked like it. The ball went over the back. Virginia still looking for their first field goal here in the second half. They've already played five minutes. Well, they've only had three field goal attempts and five turnovers. Three ball. And there it is from Cody Statman. His first points of the night. And the first points for Virginia here in the second frame. Now, Statman, that's a, he's made some key shots for the Cavaliers. They desperately needed that one. Remember, they're trying to play without Kihei Clark, who's on the bench with those three fouls. Only player in the game with three personals. But he is an important part of this Virginia squad. Virginia, when they haven't turned the ball over, have moved the ball pretty well here in the second half. And that's just a nice little touch pass by Jay Huff. Huff got everybody's attention in the first half, so he collapses the defense on him. And Casey, Cody Statman is ready to shoot the ball when he gets it. Statman then committing the foul at the other end. A sophomore from Queensland, Australia, and actually played for Australia at the Under-19 World Cup. Well, Stadman was trying to match up against Isaiah Wong, and Wong is a guy who's looking to go to the basket just about all the time and does it very effectively. That is a tough matchup for Stadman. Well, this is an interesting little matchup right there. Likes and Braxton Key, and it'll stay with Miami here, and Likes is a little slow to get up. Well, we've been talking about Braxton Key's versatility, and Virginia certainly trusts him. Looks like he banged his knee against Braxton Key. 
And then Virginia trusts him to guard Chris Lights. Now Isaiah Wong is going to get called for the offensive foul, pushing off on Diakite as he tried to get inside the lane. That's his second. And that's one of those fouls. Diakite wasn't in really good position, but Wong drives in and throws that elbow out there and knocks him down. Isaiah Wong averaging just about 16 points a game since moving into the starting role. This is his 11th straight start here tonight, but has not produced. Six minutes gone by, Diakite continues his struggles from the field. Now, Diakite is more of a face-up shooter than a back-to-the-basket kind of guy, and I thought he passed up a shot and then took a more difficult one. single digits, and Keith Stone takes it to the rack. Keith Stone is not a three-point shooter, as we mentioned before, but he's a guy who can take the ball and drive it to the basket. He's a big, strong kid, 6'8", 240 pounds. Missed 13 games earlier this season because of an injury. What a veteran playing in his 101st career game here tonight. Yakite using his strength. And that's what the Akite does. It wasn't really a matter of strength there, Steve. He turned and he faced the basket and drove the ball. He's, he's much better doing that, facing the basket, than he is with his back to the basket. Had a terrific game in the win over Miami last year. 11 points, six rebounds, three blocks. Has eight points now here on the game this evening. Virginia by one. Likes leaning in with three on the shot clock. Was trying to draw the foul and didn't get the whistle. Braxton Key actually did a pretty nice job going straight up in the air. That was offensively initiated contact, and the referees are trying hard not to reward that. Yeah, they didn't bite on the play by Likes. Yakite going around Miller, and Roddy Miller gets whistled for the foul. One of the reasons it's Braxton Key is guarding Chris Likes is that it's hard for Chris Likes to shoot over him and that Likes clearly jumps into him. Had Likes not jumped into him, there would have been no contact. And so that is the classic offensively initiated contact and the referees just refuse to bite on it. Almost a turnover there at the end of that play. Jay Huff a little lazy with the ball. Braxton Keep going inside around Likes and he scores and then Chris Likes collided with his own man Sam Wardenberg. They tried to make the play defensively and they came together and Likes is still down. Well, Braxton Key does a great job driving to the basket and Chris Likes is five feet seven. You have to wonder what he's doing trying to block a shot and I think he actually took a foot in the face. Wardenberg is going up. Likes is coming down. Oh, he gets an elbow. So it's Virginia by three here, second half. If he is face, he's been taken back to the locker room here after some friendly fire. He got clocked by his own teammate, Sam Wardenberg. Well, the right hand, lower right hand portion of the screen. Likes is going to go up to block the shot, as is Wardenberg. Wardenberg sort of falls down in his elbow. That looked like it caught Likes right in the right in the cheek. I mean, and that arm really came across swiftly, too. It's the left arm that comes down right there. It looks like it popped in right below the right eye. You hope it, it's not something like he damaged the eye socket or something, but that, that, a blow like that could break bones. What and does so Miami now, do now? My well, Likes has made more than half their field goals, and Likes has taken a third of their shots, so they're going to have to find offense from someplace else. Chris Likes with 16 points, two three-pointers, over half the total points for Miami. And they're still very much in this ball game, only down by three with 12 minutes left to go. But if he's gone for any significant amount of time, that could be a huge blow. How do they answer that? How do they adjust? Now, Beverly now taking over the point guard duties. I think they need to take the ball inside. They've had some success going into Miller. Three on the shot clock. 
Beverly well off the mark. See, Braxton Key is another really good defender, and one of the reasons is he's quick enough to move his feet to stay in front of just about anybody out there. And then if you're going to try to shoot the ball over him, those that 6'8 and long arms, that's tough to get the ball past him. Had 14 points in the win over Duke. Also the leading rebounder on this team. Lost it there, but last touch by the Hurricanes. <laughs> Rocky Miller. He may not agree with that, or maybe he does. He's just a pleasant young man. <laughs> or saying, maybe you get me next time. Seven to shoot here for Jay Huff. Jay Huff has not scored here in this second half after totaling 17 points back in the first half. Miller taking it up and heading to the free throw line. So Miami about to shoot their first free throws of the night. And nothing but net will be at Cameron Indoor Stadium after North Carolina takes on number 12 Duke. And that's this Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern. I think you might remember what happened in the first meeting between those two schools. Some rivalries live off history and past glory. But I tell you what, Carolina and Duke, each and every time, it always delivers the goods. Has it been close? I'll let you do the math. <laughs> That's coming up this Saturday in their second meeting of the year after Duke won the first. If you think about all those games, all those great players, all the points, Dan, what is it that sticks out to you about that great rivalry, not just in college basketball, but one of the best in all of sports? Well, it's one of the best in all of sports because they're great teams with great players, and their Huff is trying to force things inside, and Virginia has not had much success when they've tried to force things. Still leading by one. Closing in on the midpoint of the second half. A game Virginia has to have to stay in the hunt for the ACC regular season championship. T.H. Clark is back in the game. And Miller's alone. They don't see it. Marlon Beverly on the miss. And a foul on Miami on the rebound. It's going to be Sam Wardenberg. Yeah, looks like he may have uh, hurt himself a little bit coming down there. Trying to stretch out his right leg. And he's coming out of the game. And the last thing Miami needs is any more injuries. They've played a couple of games this year where they only had six available guys. I mean, and they're starting is, to lose them. Yeah, this is a team that's been hit hard by injuries in the second half of the season. But, but despite all that, uh, it's a one-point game. You have Chris Likes, their leading scorer out. And you also have Sam Wardenberg, their leading shot blocker and rebounder out of the game. So that means Cameron McGusty is going to take it inside, but has it partially blocked by Diakite. Uh, Diakite is a hard guy to get it by. Second among all active ACC players in career blocks. Miami continues to do an outstanding job keeping Will the Tensai away from the area where he wants to shoot the ball. 80% of his points come from three-point range but has not hit one from downtown so far tonight. Well, he's only taken one. Diakite on the reverse. Got his own rebound and makes no mistake with the second opportunity. A nice job by Diakite to drive the ball to the basket. He's turned it over a couple times trying to make that move when he traveled. You just get the idea that the first team that's able to go on any sort of a run here at all is likely going to win this game. Well, Miami went on a scoring drought of over six minutes in the first half. Their drought now at this point is over four minutes in the second half. Well, Diakite has really picked up his offensive game after a tough early start. That was a, an impossible shot that he attempted. And Miami just didn't get in good position to rebound. Diakite does a nice job getting himself stopped after he misses it and going after his own miss. He's the second Virginia player in the double figures with 10 points. Alongside Jay Huff's 17, all of which came back in the first half of play. For another near turnover. Six to shoot. Dehay Clark playing with those three personal fouls. What is he Shot doing? clock about to expire, and it is a violation. Clark got in there, drew the defense, 
Diakite was wide open and Clark just missed him. And you don't often see Diakite just went out of your screen on the left. He was all alone. Kihei Clark just gets himself stuck down on the inside. So another turnover for the Cavaliers. 13 on the game for the Hoos now. Eight and a half to go, but they still lead by three. Vasilovic, catch and shoot three. And DJ Vasilovic in his second triple of the game. And we are tied at 35. Remember, coming into this game, Vasilovic was two for 16 in his prior three games. Huff for Kihei Clark. Passed up the three. Huff will take it, though, from straight away. Tip back up and in by Braxton Key. There were no second chance points for either team back in the first half. But Key well positioned on the offensive glass there. Again, during this six game winning streak for Virginia, five of the six games decided by three points or less. That's the range we've been in throughout the night between these two teams. Five to shoot here. Stone finally gets it up with one and an air ball. And it never touched the rim, so a shot clock violation. Blows it in on the final seven minutes. Not a high scoring game, but it's a close one with Virginia leading by two. Have come from beyond the arc. The biggest problem for Miami is we've just gotten word that Chris Likes is out for the remainder of the game. He suffered an eye laceration, we're being told. Just really hope he's okay. He's got 16 points here tonight. He had two three-pointers. So almost half their entire total. Well, when he went out, Miami was down three. The Hurricanes have done a nice job hanging in there without him. Seven minutes to play. Miami down by two. Here's Thomas Wool, the 10th side. Still has not hit a three-point shot. Uh, he really hasn't been able to get open. There was no rhythm there. He caught the ball, and Isaiah Wong was right with him. McGusty and Wong have taken turns against Wold, Wold at Tensai, and they're just not giving him any room at all. The story arc here tonight for Virginia fits what we've seen all season long from the Cavaliers with the robust defense and just trying to get barely enough offense to survive, playing a lot of close games, developing the confidence to win those games, but how deep can this approach take them here as we get down towards the end of the regular season with the postseason looming, Dan? Well, you can't worry about how deep that approach is going to take you. You have to worry about possession to possession. And again, there's Diakite. He's not trying to dribble down in there and play with his back to the basket. He dribbles around, good quickness. He is hard to guard when he faces the goal. Do you get the sense, though, that for Virginia, that this is a team that's going to be comfortable in close games down the stretch, or that they're just kind of playing with fire the way they've had to win these games? I don't think you can ever be comfortable playing in this many close games. You just keep playing, grinding away, and eventually make a play. And that time, Isaiah Wong made a play, driving the ball to the basket. That's what he does so effectively, and he hadn't been able to do that tonight. Here's Diakite in the paint. Got Stone off his feet, and he knocks it down. Yakite methodically coming on here in this second half. He's got 14 points now. Well, Hop still hadn't scored after that 17 in the first half. And interestingly, Miami gave up more points in the first half when they played NC State. And C.J. Bryce scored 18. And there's Beverly getting to the basket again. The basket and one for Harlan Beverly, the freshman from Detroit. Braxton Key just gets caught up in that screen. And that's a nice job by Beverly. He recognizes that Huff has gone too far to one side, and so he drives the ball to the other side, and nobody's there to recover. That's an excellent play. Went to prep school down in Florida. And now just the third free throw. That's a free throw violation. Keith Stone just violated. Keystone was out beyond the three-point line, and you are not allowed to go beyond, you're not allowed to go inside the three-point line until the ball hits the rim. Stone is outside the three-point line. Watch him start running. That's a violation. You cannot go past the three-point line until the ball hits the rim. 
Boy, such a low-scoring game like that, a one point. It makes such a critical difference. To give it away like that hurts as Kihei Clark playing with those three personal fouls hits the fadeaway for the Cavaliers. We talked about the importance of Clark to this Virginia team. You saw it right there. He hasn't had a good offensive night, but when they need a big basket, he gets one. And timeout. Taken by Miami. Their first of the second half, four and a half left to go, and it's Virginia by four here on the... There are some things you cannot unsee. Now, his the parents, game itself... His parents must have been very happy. <laughs> the game itself coming up, Carolina and Duke, is something you're going to want to see this weekend. Coming off the terrific first go-around a few weeks ago between those two teams. Of course, setting up for the ACC tournament as well next week. So we are into... And North Carolina has won a couple of games. You know, they have struggled all season long, but they played a great game against Duke in Chapel Hill. And they're hot right now, or at least as hot as they've been. Shot clock in single digits for the Hurricanes, who trail by four. Isaiah Wong on the reverse, and he can't get it to drop. He did everything but make the basket. That was a very, very good drive, and Diakite forced him to take a difficult shot. Notre Dame leading Florida State right now. And if Notre Dame hangs on to win that game, that means that Virginia, with a win tonight, would control their fate the rest of the way and a win over Louisville this weekend would give them at least a share of the ACC regular season crown. Well, Jay Huff hadn't scored in the second half, but he's been a force on the defensive boards. Miami, just two of 14 this half from three-point range. But the amazing thing is you told all those numbers you want, but they're only down by four points. It's just amazing. Yeah, that, the, the context is that you hit one or two more of those three-pointers, and all of a sudden they're leading instead of trailing here with just over three minutes to play. This is Harlan Beverly. Quick shown, burst of speed. Yeah, he's shown the ability to get to the basket. That time went right around roll, roll the 10 side. Two point game. Under three left to go. Virginia trying to win for the seventh consecutive game. Miami trying to end a two game losing streak. And a foul on the Hurricanes. DJ Vasilovic. Fun is the lead for Virginia, but for Miami, this is a team that shot 36% from the field. They're 21% from three-point range. Their best player is out for the remainder of the game. Chris Likes had blood coming from his face. He's out with 16 points. Yet, Dan, it is still just a two-point margin. Miami's defense has been very solid, particularly here in the second half. They have held Virginia to only 36% shooting, have held them to nine field goals and only one three-point basket. Virginia one for six in the second half from beyond the arc. So Miami's defense is keeping them in the game. The question is, and that's what Virginia's defense has done throughout, the question is, can either team generate enough offense to actually win the game? Now, Key at the free throw line, that was a nice move he made to draw the foul. When he gets inside, it was a mismatch against Vasilovich, but Key is not a good free throw shooter, as you can see. Only the second player to go to the free throw line tonight for Virginia. A grand total in the game. That's the fifth free throw attempt we've had. Two by Miami and now two by the uh, second one coming for Key, so it'll be six when he finishes here. So he gets one of two. So now, Virginia, you turn it over to your defense once again. Well, the 10 side goes out, and they, they feel like Marcel has a better chance staying in front of Wong or Beverly. Those two guys have really made a living driving to the basket here recently. Into the corner for Vasilovic. Huff gets on him. And now Keith Stone, the straightaway three from Keith Stone. That's two threes that Stone has made in the game. And again, coming into this game in ACC play, he was four for 27 from out there. 
Tie ball game. Just over two minutes to play as Kihei Clark has it blocked by Wong. Clark takes the ball inside, and that's a nice job by Vasilovic to fake at him. The guy who was out in the corner was Key, and so that's not really an option for Kihei Clark because Braxton Key is not a good three-point shooter. So nice exactly defensive play by Wall. Two minutes left to go. 44 apiece. For two, two minutes left to go. You don't need a big run. You just need a little one. Shot clock in single digits. Braxton Key for the three. Huh. Tipped it back out, shot clock resetting. That's a tough break for Miami. Key is exactly the Cavalier you want to shoot the ball if you're the Hurricane. Kihei Clark again gets inside. And here comes Harlan Beverly for the Hurricanes with momentum. And he's going to be fouled on the floor. And with 128 left to go. And it's going to be Jay Huff who's assessed the foul, his second. It's actually a good foul by Huff because there was no way he was blocking that shot. Chris Likes injured with 12 minutes and 11 seconds left to go in this game. Jay Huff hasn't scored in the second half. And Miami, this game is tied despite those numbers, those shooting numbers in this half. Miami still not in the bonus here. As we close in on the final minute of regulation. Wong lost the ball. The turnover by Miami at a critical time. And with one minute to go, Virginia looking for something from their offense. They're 0 for their last five. They well, haven't taken very good shots. That was great defense by Braxton Key, though. It's a game they have to win to have any chance at the ACC regular season championship. Seven to shoot. Jay Huff. And the rebound to Keith Stone. And a timeout taken by the Hurricanes. That's their second of this second half. 40 seconds left to go in regulation. The Cavaliers decided by seven or less. And during the six game winning streak, five of those victories decided by three points or fewer. Now Virginia again, they're turning it over to their defense. Beverly has been really good for Miami down the stretch. He's driven the ball to the basket, scored three critical field goals. Virginia trying to extend this winning streak to seven in a row. And win for the 10th time in their last 11 games. Shot clock now at six. Beverly over Kihei Clark. Rebound to Wardenburg with one of the shot clock. Never got to the rim. And now final 10 seconds. Tied at 44. And the foul by Beverly. Oh my, that's the seventh team foul. That'll send Kihei Clark to the line. And that is exactly the guy you don't want to send to the line. Leading free throw shooter on this team. And second in the ACC at 86%. Well, but still, it's a one and one and it's in a critical situation. Beverly, I'm, I'm not sure. I think maybe he thought he had a foul to give. I don't know. His first free throws of the night. Notice that Tony Bennett elected not to call a timeout in that situation in a tie game. Didn't want Miami to get a chance to set their defense. And now, now the timeout is taken by Bennett. Now, Tony Bennett thought Jim Laranega was calling the timeout. In fact, Tony Bennett was pointing down there at uh, Ted Valentine and said, wait a minute, didn't he call the timeout? But so a timeout is charged to Virginia. So 8.3 to go, and Virginia leading by two. So much on the line for these Cavaliers. Trying to preserve what a couple of months ago looked like an unlikely shot at the ACC regular season title. They started ACC play at three and four. We're barely scoring more than 50 points a game. But now after this tremendous run, where they won six in a row and nine of 10, they're down to the final two games of the regular season. They need to win them both tonight here at Miami and then against Louisville on Saturday. And if they do, they've got a chance with some help 
who have at least a share of the title. Now, none of that makes any difference here unless they can execute defensively in the last 8.3 seconds. They did at the end of the Duke game. Sometimes when Virginia has won these games, the play they've made has been on the defensive end. Sometimes on the offensive end, it looks like if they're going to preserve this victory, they have to make a play defensively. And, Dan, you have to remember, Miami's best player, Chris Likes, is out of the game. So how do the Hurricanes attack this Virginia defense? Well, I think you drive the ball at them. And if you can't get a basket or a foul, you kick it out. And I think you go looking for Vasilovic. This is Harlan Beverly. Gets around Clark, who fouls him. Well, Virginia has a foul to give. Yep. You can see that's team foul number six on Virginia. That's the fourth personal as well on Kihei Clark. That's probably not the guy you wanted to give the foul in that situation, though. You might end up playing overtime. You might need that foul. And the clock showing 4.6. So both teams in the bonus here. Well, Miami has done a fabulous job with all of their struggles and the fact that they lost Chris Likes earlier in the second half of staying close here. Their defense, which has been suspect at various points this season, it's been inconsistent. Sometimes the effort just has not been there, but the defense has done a fabulous job of keeping them close. But there's been no problem with defense or effort tonight, particularly in the second half. Miami has done a really good job forcing the Cavaliers into tough shots. Miami coaching staff trying to figure out where they're going to inbound the ball. It's going to be right in front of that penguin over there at the scorer's table. So without likes available, who does this inbounds pass go to? Who do you want to take that shot? Well, it's not a matter of who you want to take the shot. I think you've got to get the ball probably to Beverly so he can take the ball and attack the basket. And you don't, have, you don't have a lot of time now for multiple passes. You don't have to take one dribble and shoot it. You don't have to have the guy who catches the inbound pass drive the ball to the basket. But the Phil Phil Vasilovich has shown that he has heated up a little bit from three-point range tonight. Keith Stone is a threat on the inside. And now a timeout taken by Tony Bennett. Wanted to see the look, and then he calls his players back. Now this should be business as usual for the Cavaliers, given what they've gone through lately. Well, it's certainly business as usual for the coaching staff. They're constantly trying to draw plays and set defenses in these kinds of situations. I think that every Virginia fan in the world has to have high blood pressure also. But at some point, you get so used to it and the way they have executed when it's come down to this particular stage of the game, you have to feel confident. Well, you don't have to make all the plays, but you have to make the big plays. And the Cavaliers are looking to make a big play right now. They've made several big plays lately. It was the Jay Huff block at the end of the Duke game this past weekend. It's always someone that comes through. That has been the common refrain for the Cavaliers this season. Augusti inbounds for Miami to Vasilovic. Over Wolda Tensai. And with .8 on the clock, the shot misses and the Cavaliers hang on. Once again, they survive. They've now won seven in a row and 10 of their last 11. And they keep hope alive for a portion of the ACC regular season championship. And Mamadi Diakite is our player of the game tonight, brought to you by Zaxby's. Well, after a slow start, Diakite really did a great job. 14 points, 10 rebounds. He had a couple of blocked shots and a couple more shots that were altered, including that last one. Comes away with the double-double, 14 and 10. Virginia holding Miami to a season low in total points at just 44. 
Jay Huff right there had 17 points to lead Virginia in scoring, but all of those came back in the first half. He went scoreless in the second half of play. But another huge close win for Virginia. They just keep churning them out here late in the season. During this now seven game winning streak, six of the victories have been by three.